The Lord be with you. Today is Friday, April 10th. Today is the day we call Good Friday. The end of our Lenten journey is almost here. We have made it this far, but today we turn to death. Today we remember the suffering of our Lord Christ. And today we've gathered as we have every day of this week for morning prayer. And later today, after we're finished with our service, you're going to be invited to go to our YouTube channel. We'll post a link in the comments in just a little bit. Uh, you can go to our, our YouTube page and we have prepared a digital Stations of the Cross journey for you. And for those who are part of our First Presbyterian Church of Flint family, we have chosen to use locations around the church. Uh, so, uh, so, so you'll be able to visit places around our church building as we remember the path of Christ from betrayal to burial. Now, we begin this day, though, with songs, with prayers, with readings from scripture. So if you have downloaded the order, you can follow along. If you have not, we're going to put most of it up on the screen for you. And so let us begin. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live to righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Let us begin by singing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss. And poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should gain, save in the full death of Christ my God, all the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. From his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet? Or thorns compose so rich? Demands 
my soul, my life, my all. Let us give thanks to God for our baptisms on this day. The Apostle Paul writes in the book of Romans that if we have been buried with Christ in death, we will be united to Christ in life. For if you have been united with Christ in a death like his, you will certainly be united to Christ in a resurrection like his. So let us give thanks to God for our baptisms. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Merciful God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you offer the forgiveness of sin and wash us clean from all evil. By the power of your Holy Spirit, renew our lives and make us worthy to enter into your eternal sanctuary through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Here is the gospel in liquid form. If anyone is in Christ, they are part of God's new creation. Know that you have been forgiven through Christ and be at peace this day. Amen. If you are at home and you have a small bowl of water or a running tap, you can go and take some water and dip your fingers in it. And you can trace the sign of the cross on your forehead remembering not only that you are baptized in part of the promises of God, but also remembering the shape of the cross, indeed the shape of the cross we trace on this Good Friday. We continue with our psalm singing, and um, today we're going to do a hybrid. We're not going, I'm not going to sing the psalm. I'm going to, we're going to sing the refrain, um, but we're, we're not go- I'm going to uh, read the psalm while I play, Um, And then uh, we'll invite you to join in on our refrain today. I'll put it up for us to see. Um, Before before I put it up, though, I just want to make one note about Psalm 22. You'll recall that on the cross, Jesus cried out at one point, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, right? Uh, 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 An Aramaic phrase, uh, which, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it's, uh, it's the opinion of many scholars that when in ancient literature, when someone recites the first line of an ancient poem or a psalm, it is a shorthand for uh, reading everything that follows. So I imagine Christ on the cross not stopping at the first verse of Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, but actually chanting or saying all of it. And so today we're going to encounter Psalm 22, and I want us on this Good Friday to encounter this psalm as if Christ were saying it from the cross. And so let us join our pathos, our suffering, our anguish. Let us join our pain to the pain of Christ on the cross. And let us do so by using uh, this, pull it up here. Uh, this refrain, we've done it before, so if you're, with, if you're back with us, you'll know it already. This is Psalm, uh, this is Psalm 22. Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me. Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry die by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy. You are enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. In you they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me. Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me. Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. My strength, hasten to help me. Lord, you are my strength, hasten to help me. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And my, for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me, Lord, you are my 
strength, hasten to help me. Lord, you cried from the cross, joining your anguish to your lament as you asked God to intercede. Help us learn how to join our anguish to our lament, that we might rightly turn to you and be saved. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. We turn to a reading from the scriptures today, and we have two readings. We have a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and we have a short reading from the Gospel of John. Let us hear these words, first about the servant of Christ, or the servant of God, who we know as Jesus Christ, and then let us listen to the presentation of Jesus before the people, which happened right about this time in Jesus' day. So, let us hear from the book that we love. From the book of the prophet Isaiah, we hear these words. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering, acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of God to crush him with pain. And when you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Let us listen again to the book that we love from the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter. Hear these words. And Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns, and they put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. And they kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him in the face. 
Pilate went out again and said to the people, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. And so Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. And when the religious leaders saw him, they shouted, Crucify him. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. It's Good Friday, and it's a good time to ask the question that many people ask on this day, namely, what's so good about Good Friday? It's a day where our readings are not joyful readings, our songs are not joyful songs, our songs are minor keyed and slow. We are not in a season of joy yet. We are in this day that is fixated on the death of Christ. What is so good about Good Friday? I think, first I would say, I, I think in order for Good Friday to be good, you have to be looking at it from the perspective of Easter Sunday. Because had Christ stayed dead, Good Friday would not be a good day at all. But the sacrifice of Christ was, in fact, good. The offering of Christ on our behalf was good. The promise of Christ that if a seed falls into the ground, then life can spring forth is good. There is much good, but it is enveloped in so much that is bad and hurtful and painful. What makes Good Friday good? I'm struck by this reading today from the Gospel of John. I'm struck, especially in conjunction with the, book, with the reading from Isaiah, I'm struck because here Jesus is. He has been beaten. He has a crown of thorns on his head. He is wearing a robe. They're mocking him. And Pilate, the, 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 the Roman uh, procurator there in Judea, the one who is tasked by Rome with keeping the peace and maintaining order, Pilate, as judge, brings Jesus out, and he has to look particularly pitiful. Pilate looks, points to Jesus, and he says three words, Behold the man. For Latin students, it's ecce homo. Two words. Behold the man. And I can't help but wonder if Pilate, in looking at this emaciated, broken down, bloodied body of a man standing before him, is not impressed with this Jesus. He says, behold, the man, all he can see, all Pilate can perceive in this Jesus is just what he can see, the man, bloodied and about to die. And I wonder if on this Good Friday, we look at this, we hear these readings of Christ, about Jesus, we, we fix our imaginations on what Jesus must have felt or gone through on this day. We're going to go through a stations of the cross where we're going to walk with Christ through all these moments leading up to crucifixion and death and burial. And, and I wonder if we look at this and, and we just feel like in the face of all of the things that we are anxious with and terrified of, I just wonder if we look around in our world today and I wonder if we just say, well, behold, the man. And we go through the religious Rituals and the practices that we always do, but we, we, we don't perceive beyond what Pilate perceived. What makes Good Friday good? What makes Good Friday good is when we are able to perceive past the behold the man to see exactly who is standing before us today. What makes Good Friday good 
is not that someone did something nice for somebody else and, uh, and, and died for them, though that is certainly a noble thing. What makes Good Friday good is that God became flesh and allowed himself to be crucified so that we might have peace with him. What makes Good Friday good is that while Pilate says, behold the man, the church says, behold the Lord. And through this sacrifice, through this offering of himself, God makes crystal clear to anyone who would wonder, how far will God go to rescue his beloved? How far, church? He will go this far. He will go as far as to be incarnated. He will go as far as to be subject to mortality. He will go as far as to suffer and to bleed and to die and to be buried. He will go that far. And so indeed, the scripture is fulfilled. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. And we know this because Jesus went this far. What makes Good Friday good? Nothing on its surface. But like in the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the children have to learn of the deeper magic. They have to learn of what lies beneath what you observe. They have to learn about the real, real world that exists below the surface of perception. So what makes Good Friday good? The Lord, the God who made heaven and earth, became flesh and died. And through his death, we have been granted peace, forgiveness, wholeness, and salvation. And we did nothing to earn this. What makes Good Friday good? Jesus Christ makes Good Friday good. Amen. We bring before God today our prayers and our intercessions, for it is right for us to bring our prayers before the Lord. On this day, uh, as we go through each petition, I will leave a little bit of a pause and I would invite you in the context of your home to uh, please go ahead and, and offer prayers out loud uh, that, you, uh, that might fit with, with those um, particular petitions. Um, and so we'll leave a little bit of space and we'll join together in prayer across our city. So let us begin in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Loving God, to you our Savior Christ called on the cross. To you he pleaded for mercy for his tormentors. To you he asked for a sign of your presence. To you now we cry in our time of suffering and separation. Hear our cries in Jesus' name. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For our president and for the leaders of this nation. For those called to govern mercifully, peaceably, and faithfully. For the just and proper use of your creation. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy.
for the peace and unity of the church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For the special needs and concerns of our congregation, which we make known to you now, O God. Lord, hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join in singing our concluding hymn, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, When my heart is almost breaking, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. When I'm dying, Lord, walk with me. When I'm dying, Lord, walk with me. When my life is almost over, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. We prepare for the rest of this day by clearing our space. So I'm gonna play some music and you're going to watch as I empty this space and make it ready for the weekend.
Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice, It is finished. 